Thank you. Called the Westfield Washington Township Advisory Plan Commission order for December 21st, 2020. Will the staff please note the presence of a quorum by calling the roll? Ms. Berkman? Here. Mr. Graham? Present. Mr. Horke? Here. Mr. Johns? Mr. Johns? Dr. Kelleher? Here. Mr. Maui? Here. McCarty? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Here. Eric? Here. And we'll try Mr. Johns again. Here. Okay, we have a quorum. Thank you, Ms. Howard. <clears throat> Next up is consideration of approval of the minutes from November 16th, 2020, as well as December 7th, 2020. Having had opportunity to review those sets of minutes, are there any additions, corrections, or comments from the commissioners? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion. This is Kelleher. I will make a motion to approve the APC minutes of November 16th, 2020 and December 7th, 2020 as written. Party will second. I did not catch the second. Who was that? Victor. Victor. Victor McCarty. Thank you. I'm not getting audio on him at all. Uh, I have a motion made by Dr. Kelleher, seconded by Mr. McCarty to approve the minutes of November 16, 2020 and December 7th, 2020 as written. Will the staff please call the roll? Ms. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Horke? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Dr. Kelleher? Yes. Mr. Maui? Yes. Mr. McCarty? Mr. McCarty? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Yes. Ms. Spelljarek? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Howard. We have two items up for consideration this evening. Uh, one is up for approval. The other is up for recommendation to City Council. Uh, will the staff please review the rules and procedures for this evening's meeting? Due to the COVID-19 emergency as declared by the Governor of Indiana, the format and conduct of the meeting has been modified to comply with executive orders regarding the conduct of public meetings, public hearings, and public gatherings. Relevant portion of the Indiana open door law have been amended or suspended during the pendency of this emergency. For all petitions, tonight's meeting will have the following structure. The department will summarize the petition and describe what action, if any, is necessary to be taken. The petitioner will then be given up to 15 minutes to present any changes to the plan commission. Uh, the, plan, the plan commission president will call upon each member to provide comments or questions regarding the petition and the petitioner will then have a chance to respond to comments. I'd also like to remind everyone to please mute your microphone when you are not speaking this evening. Thank you. I would just like to interject real quickly. I apologize for the interruption. There does seem to be a sound issue on the stream, but we are getting a recording of the meeting. Thank you. All right, um, on to our first item of business this evening. 2012-ODP-19, 2012-SPP-19, Chatham Point. Yes, thank you, Mr. President and members of the commission. Pam Howard with the Community Development Department. Before you this evening for primary plot and overall development plan approval, we have 10 lots on approximately 21 acres at the northwest corner of Cox Avenue and Tomlinson Road within the Chatham Hills PUD District. This item did have a public hearing at your December 7th meeting and no written public comments were received. This item does include two waiver requests related to the pedestrian network standards. The Department of Public Works does support these requests and a letter from the city engineer is included as an exhibit to the agenda. 
The waivers will need to be voted on first. If the waivers are approved, then the petition is compliant with the exception of the tree preservation area, which does require additional detail. For this reason, we are asking that approval of the landscape plan be delegated to the department. The petitioner does not plan to present this evening, but is available for questions, as am I if you have any of the department. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Howard. Uh, we will start with Ms. Fulgerick this evening. Any questions or comments? Uh, not at this time, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schmitz, questions or comments? None from me, thank you. Thank you. Mr. McCarty, questions or comments? No questions from me, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Maui, questions or comments? I have none, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Johns, questions or comments? No questions, no comments. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jorge, questions or comments? Same here. No questions, no comments. I would be also willing to support the waivers that uh, the uh, department has also agreed upon. Thank you. Ms. Berkman, questions or comments? None, thank you. Dr. Kelleher, questions, comments? None, thank you. Thank you. All right, if there is no discussion, then um, Mr. Horke, would you like to, to make that waiver approval in the form of a motion? I believe that was a motion. Yeah, I wasn't trying to speed the meeting along too much, but you know, that's always good. But yeah, I would move that we approve the waivers uh, of the UD or, uh, UDO articles as listed, uh, sections 8.7C2 and 8.7D2. Thank you, do I have a second? I will second, this is Kelleher. I will read it out for the record. I have a motion made by Mr. Horke, second by Dr. Kelleher to approve the requested subdivision waivers from UDO Articles 8.7C2 and 8.7D2 to eliminate sidewalk requirement on the west side of Chatham Point Lane and to eliminate the perimeter path requirement along the Cox Avenue frontage. Staff, please call the roll. Ms. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Horke? Yes. Johns? Yes. Elher? Yes. Mr. Maui? Yes. Mr. McCarty? Yes. Mr. Schmitz? Yes. Ms. Bulgerick? Yes. Thank you. Well, as number two states, the waivers are approved. Uh, the plans comply and are eligible for approval. So I would entertain a motion on item three at this time. This is Kelleher. I will make a motion that we approve 2012-ODP-19 <clears throat> and 2012-SPP-19. Um, with the necessary approvals being obtained from Public Works Department, Hamilton County Surveyor's Office, prior to the issuance of an improvement location permit, and that the approval of the landscape plan be delegated to staff upon completion of a tree inventory survey. This is my way, I'll second that motion. I have a motion made by Dr. Kelleher, seconded by Mr. Maui, to approve 2012-ODP-19, 2012-SPP-19, with the staff's noted conditions that Dr. Kelleher read for the record. We call the roll, please. Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Horke? Yes. Mr. Johns? Yes. Dr. Kelleher? Yes. Mr. Maui? Yes. Mr. McCarty? Yes. Mr. Schmitz? Yes. Ms. Bulgerick? Yes. Ms. Berkman? Yes. Motion carries. 
Thank you, Ms. Howard. On to the next and uh, final active item on our agenda this evening. 2009-PUD-11 Woods Robinson Briggs PUD. Good evening, Planning Commission. For the record, Dane Crabtree with the Community Development Department. The item before you this evening is the Woods Robinson Briggs PUD, a proposal to rezone approximately 157 acres of AGSF1 agriculture single family rural zone property on the north side of 191st Street near the intersection of Grand Park Boulevard to a mixed use PUD. With commercial, single family residential, long term rental, short term rental, institutional, and an area for a public park, staff believes the project, as shown before you this evening, meets the intent of the family sports capital vision of the comprehensive plan for this geographic area. This item received a public hearing at the September 8th Plan Commission meeting, and the petitioner provided an update at the November 4th Plan Commission meeting. Since the public hearing, the project has gone through numerous revisions, which can be viewed in your staff report. The most significant revisions include a significantly more detailed concept plan, as shown before you currently, the removal of the townhome district, which will now default to AGSF1 zoning, the removal of a multifamily use in District 1 for short-term rentals and instead deeming such rentals a hotel use, which is a permitted use in GB. Reducing the number of suburban rental units in District 2 from 350 to 300 while also adding significant landscaping requirements and multiple amenities. Adding a motorsports team facility as an additional permitted use in the commercial district. Reducing the amount of signage along 191st Street from four center monument signs to one center monument sign and three individual monument signs. Adding additional character exhibits for the commercial district while removing duplicated exhibits also found in the previously approved links PUD and declaring that the public park shall be three to five acres in size and dedicated to the city of Westfield. The petitioner is requesting a vote this evening. The petitioner Birch Dalton of Edge Rock Development would like to make a brief presentation after which he will be available for questions. Also, we will be available if there are questions of staff. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crabtree. Mr. Dalton, go ahead and proceed. Uh, yes, can everybody hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to ask a couple procedural items, if I may, please. Mr. President? Yes, yes go ahead. Okay. Well, one, um, I would like to re request some time after the vote is taken tonight to make a comment, please, for the record. And then two, this is a question. Um, the transcript for tonight's meeting, is that a type written one that's available? And if so, when would it be available? I will defer to staff. Uh, the answer is yes to the first question. I will defer to staff. Uh, as to the written transcript, uh, could you someone please answer that? Yeah, this is Kevin. Um, we we uh, we don't have a transcript typically unless requested. Uh, we we provide minutes, which is is a reflection of of what happens during a meeting. It reflects the vote and it generally reflects the discussion that occurs, but it's not a transcript per se. The minutes will be available. Um, typically the Thursday prior to the next plan commission meeting, which in this case will be Tuesday, January 19th. So if you need a transcript, that's a that's a little bit outside of our norm, um, but we could we could work on getting that prepared. Kevin, President, my this, ask this question, Kevin, please. this is Zager. You the recordings are available for the public, aren't they? Yeah, good point. Yes, the so recordings. He can make his own transcript if he wants. Yep, that works too. Okay. Okay, so you're telling me that the recording is as good as a legal transcript, then, Mr. Zeger? No, it's just a legal recording. Okay. It's just a recording. Uh, thank you. It's not. A, it's not a transcript. We don't supply transcripts. Okay. Point taken. Uh, Mr. Graham, thank you for this opportunity to present, and uh, it'll probably be a little longer than a short one, as you know, I've invested a year and a half in this project, substantial amount of money, so I want to get my piece in before the vote. Uh, I think the staff report says a lot, so 
especially when you look at the modifications um, that, you know, it shows that I've listened to the comments that have came in uh, and reacted to them and agreed to 99.9% .9 of them to make this a, a, a truly workable PUD between APC members, public, and others. I think the comp, um, the comp plan, if you look at the five bullet points, um, you know, this, this multi-use project scores off the chart. And I'll pull your attention to the economic impact. You know, you're looking at probably $230 million in project costs, which would translate easily over to a couple of million in true tax payments, which if you look at Ed Rock's record uh, of producing AV and, and taxes in this community, it's pretty good. Uh, starting with my Riverview project that people have seemed to forget over time. Uh, but to the staff comment in the staff report, you see it's very long, very uh, inclusive and detailed oriented. And I would suggest to you that the level of detail provided in the PUD ordinance that has been modified several times after meetings with Cindy and Mike John and listen to other people's comments, the level of detail exceeds other multi-use uh, PUDs approved, such as the Wheeler, Midtown, and others. So I felt I've done a very good job here, and Ed Rock and my team has done a very good job. And I would comment that, you know, the comments that came in and circulated APC at 415 the day of a meeting, you know, it's probably, I would not do that to anybody. And I would suggest it's not proper, probably not legal, it's definitely not right. But I responded to each one of them as I have. Um, and going through this, you know, I sent out a nice summary this morning, but I want to touch on these bases before I, I answer questions. You know, Ms. Berkman um, was very supportive of the Tennis Pickleball uh, Center, as has everybody has been on this project. Um, and, you know, it's exciting. It's a cool use for Graham Park to bring a national, you know, indoor tournament of the pickleball nature. Um, and she commented on, you know, having firm features for the park and a cohesive realtor plan. So you will see that, you know, we memorialized the vision for the racket center in the PUD. We also committed to park features that were, you know, came from her ideas. And we downsized the number of buildings in the retail area and clearly defined them with size and use in terms of short-term short use. You know, be owned and managed by one entity. Um, so we have, I believe I've addressed her concerns that she's given me today. Um, Andre, you know, gave us a great idea on the energy district, and we spent extensive time with Duke and others discussing this. While it's difficult to have definitive plans for solar and definitely hard for wind, um, some of the other ideas he gave us, um, We've worked with Duke, and we have uh, some really great ideas coming for various electric car charging stations. Um, but uh, we believe we're going to have some very cool green funded uh, deals from Duke. So that those comments were well taken. In terms of Mr. John's concerns about Edrock's track record, other PUDs, and timing, I already responded to that in a prior email that he sent to APC members and, and to council. And I'll stand by Ed Rock's record in performance of high quality projects from Riverview, Durham Art, Starbucks, and others. Um, also, Mr. Johns was uh, uh, very uh, interested in knowing more about District 2. So he's had an opportunity to discuss that with the developer uh, from Chicago and answer his questions, and we sent additional information to kind of refine, you know, that product. While it may be new to some people, it's not new to America. It's a well-received product from Ohio, Texas, Colorado, and other locales. Um, and as far as, you know, the market have a problem with it, um, David Weekly and Lennar, you know, David Weekly is the number two largest private builder in the country, and Lennar um, publicly traded 
you know, uh, uh, builder, both have a high interest in it to be built in this project, and both have expressed interest that if Chicago stumbles, they would like to take it over and build it. So the leaders in the residential market who have proven product in our community support support. Uh, Ms. Polderic had made several comments over the last couple of months of which we responded to promptly and made uh, significant changes in, in standards and also re, redid the concept plan to uh, include the uh, approximate size of each district that she requested, a phasing of the, dic- of, of the project, assuming approval, and you know reduction of retail bills. Also, we clearly defined the water features as part of the project to include a master detention lake, which is shown on the concept plan on the suburban rental property, and the fountain attractions that um, they suggested they wanted a commitment to, both included and changed. Staff has worked you know, very hard to include all the responses to all the public questions, which I've responded to, previously submitted. APC members concerned and general gratis um, to the, the PUD requirements. I think with the COVID changing this world we're in, we have programmed on what we believe makes a project perform in a post-COVID world. With the diversity of people coming from Grand Park, and I think I'm as in tune to who comes to Grand Park as anybody as I'm out there virtually every weekend and several times during the week. Um, at Grand Park Event Center, we're going to have spaces indoor, extensive outdoor, all with control plans if needed if in the future. You know, we believe we've been more than proactive and responsive in this PUD process with all parts. It's well thought out, and it's an exciting project for Grand Cor- uh, for our corridor. And it's important that all districts need to be approved for the economics to work. In other words, I'm not going to build a standalone bracket center out there and not the house. Can't do it, won't do it, it doesn't make sense. Um, Edgerock has invested over a year and a half working with the sellers, city planners, um, the financing and the process. You know, I think this project, you know, makes sense as the comprehensive plan says so. In fact, you know, it, you know, it, it actually hits on every aspect of it. And creating creative entertainment, promoting indoor, outdoor, championship sports, you know, creative lodging, and so forth. It brings jobs, permanent jobs, um, and, you know, I would respectfully request a positive vote from each member of the APC tonight so we make this happen and start in 2021. With that, Mr. President, I'm ready to take uh, questions. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. I'll start uh, at the other side of the roll with Dr. Kelleher. No questions, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Berkman. Questions or comments? Um, just a couple. Thanks, Randy. Um, I guess just a couple of things where I still have some concern on this one, and I feel like I've said these in my prior comments, so I I didn't send anything over the weekend. I am very much in favor of a tennis facility going at Grand Park. I think it's an important piece of the sports portfolio that's missing. This PUD doesn't guarantee it. It's in there, but it could also be a recreation facility, which is something I sent prior. And I know Mr. Dalton said, you know, with the COVID and trying to bring together financing and different things for this um, tennis facility, you know, he just can't commit to it definitely being a tennis facility. So we have a broader use there, which could be a baseball facility, it could be a basketball facility, really anything that's recreational. So for me, that's a big concern. Um, the motor, moving the motor sports over to this is another concern for me because we just approved that in the links 
I had that in a prior email. And I guess maybe that deal's not happening now with the go karts. And so I'm just not sure why we can't take this new customer and have them use this approved use over at the links, which we've already approved. Um, so I guess, you know, those are still some outstanding concerns for me. And then overall, just I, I don't really understand what the commercial section is going to look like at this point. Um, with the overlay, using the 32 overlay, but then also some different renderings. And so I, I'm still just somewhat confused on what this that area is going to look like, what it's going to be. And um, so I'll close with that, but I, I still have those concerns, which I brought up prior uh, to tonight. So thank you. Uh, Mr. President, can I respond to those, please? Yes, please do. Well, one, you know, I am not doing a basketball or a baseball. I've already done baseball at Pro X, and I've already done basketball at Pacer Fieldhouse, which I was the developer of Pro X and an investor, and I'm an investor in the Pacer Fieldhouse. I can't guarantee anything. I mean, you know, certainly can't guarantee financing in this crazy world and the changeover to fight. But I can guarantee I won't build those two things if that leaves your concern. So, I mean, that's pretty cut and dry. I mean, I'm building a, a world-class pickleball operation with tennis facility, spa, maybe squash, maybe platform tennis. It's a racket center. Now, moving motorsports from one area to another, I mean, let's say I have Schmidt, Peterson, McLaren, which I have right now in play, and Andretti shows up. I mean, are we only going to have one spot for him? I mean, we, we, we've zoned a million daycares, five tire stores, and there's probably more zone that could be built. So I, I don't understand the logic of not having flexibility to offer multiple users to come to town. And as far as the commercial, I mean, I, you know, as I said, the level of detail provided exceeds the other PUD. So I'm sorry you, you can't understand it, but I mean, it, it's simply two to three story with the first floor being retail and the upper floors having hotel uh, rooms available for Grand Park to fulfill the need, which is now going out of town. So, you know, so that's my response to that, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Mr. Horke, do you have any questions or comments? No questions. I've read all the materials, studied them as thoroughly as I feel I can and need to. And it is a complicated project and has evolved over time, but I can connect the dots and I believe there's a, a good synergy here that will be good for Westfield to the point about motorsports i would kind of agree with birch more of those would be better they're high profile big dollar industries that build very nice buildings that will pay an awful lot of money i'd love to have the ray hall letterman lanigan building in westfield but we missed the boat on that but i think this is all working together and i understand from my history in real estate that these are not a la carte items you can't just pick and choose that they lean on each other and in reviewing how it all transitions and what's included in each i'm comfortable and so i don't really have any questions and look forward to hearing everybody else and seeing if we can proceed mr president can i respond to one comment please yes you may well actually we had the ray hall project uh, at the link project and unfortunately, uh, Zionsville uh, put an incentive package together that, you know, Westfield is not in the business of doing and, and took the project from us. Um, and I could be happy to share the, the, the correspondence with Mr. Ray Hall um, and Pierce, and, you know, of which 13 present lives in Westfield. So we were in play at Lake. They liked it. We built a concept plan. They agreed to it. 
and then Zionsville came back and offered something that I wouldn't even bother coming to the council to ask to do because I know we wouldn't do it. So, you know, we just lost the deal, you know, to somebody willing to write a check. So, you know, I felt real comfortable. Westfield was very competitive location wise, you know, zoning wise, and the, they, you know, they were comfortable with the developer. So, you know, there's always more to a story that you don't know. So I just helped you out there a little bit, Mr. Orkay. Appreciate that. I wasn't aware that uh, you had that early contact. I just know that when that was All announced right. in Zionsville, it was a high-class looking building that's quite pricey and it's a driver I've always liked. So it would have been great to have had them here. I understand though that there's a cost versus benefit analysis that needs to be done and we probably weren't in the position to be able to compete in the game that Zionsville was very interested in competing in. So things fall. You know, chips fell where they fell, but thanks for trying. Well, yeah, I appreciate it, Mr. Orkay, and it goes back to the Grand Millennium. You know, some of you will remember the competition we were in with the car at Desta, where we went from not being on the radar to coming down to between us and Carmel. Everybody loved our, our location, and wanted to go to the Grand Millennium, but, you know, uh, Carmel was willing to write a lot bigger check to keep them. So that's some of the the give and take, Miss Berkman, that I have to live with every day is I try to guarantee projects for what. And Thank the you. car car project I was familiar with, and yeah. we definitely were competing with somebody who had a very fat checkbook and liked to write them. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Johns. Questions or comments? Yes, uh, <clears throat> my my. One of my major concerns was with the uh, quote suburban rental. So I did have an opportunity through Birch to speak with Jackson Dearborn Partners and the sub four development folks in Chicago uh, regarding the project. Um, and they're part of the proposed project. I found out that they are primarily uh, student housing and multifamily has been their focus in the past. Uh, they primarily use uh, opportunity zones, uh, which are zones that were created through the 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, uh, which create these zones, which are designated low income population census tracts. And that's where they do the great majority of their business and have. Now, they, that said, they are working on a project, as I understand it, in the Phoenix area, which would be similar to this project. Um, they told me that if they were going to do this project, that they would be look at no more than 10 units per acre. And uh, so they were looking at approximately a 22 to 25 acre range. And... Um, working on the concept of putting up about 140 buildings. But again, they said 10 per acre as opposed to the 12 per acre that Birch is, is proposing here. Um, they made an interesting comment and their comment was, if I can pretty much quote them, they said that really the whole project in order to work, Birch is gonna need to build out the other uses and quote, the biggest risk is for Birch to get the rest of the project done. And he, they felt that the rest of the project was a lot more complex than the suburban rentals, if you will. Uh, which brings me down to kind of my concern with the project as a whole. I just feel it's a extremely complex project. Um, I, I, I know that Birch has said he's working on some of the other developments that have already been approved, but I do have some concern with the lack of, of development in the Grand Millennium and also the Link project uh, that they really have not come to fruition. Um, I think that there's a lot of land that has been uh, rezoned for development and is currently sitting idle, and that uh, the lack of performance in these projects it's definitely going to impact my opinion on uh, Ed Rock's ability to, to complete this project. So um, I think the end result for me is, is, is would be um, my concern is that uh, we're going to tie up this, this property uh, and we're going to wind up escalating the land prices in the area 
and that's going to have a negative impact on our development for Westfield as a whole. So those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Graham, may I? Certainly. Well, number one, Mike, you know, you're, you're not up to speed at all on Grand Millennium. If you were, you know there's several projects in the work. And two, we've invested close to $20 million in the Grand Millennium since July 2019. Now, I don't know about you, but I kind of had to stumble through a little COVID problem there. But to say that we were not on schedule is inaccurate and it's just false. You're wrong. Two, the link, I did not close on the dirt because nobody in their right mind would close on $6 million of dirt, even after I spent several hundred thousand dollars um, zoning it, you know, to close on it in, in March 2020 when everything shut down. So to say lack of progress on it, well, shit, how many restaurants have closed? How many other businesses have closed? Uh, so I, I think your comments are wrong, and, and quite frankly, it shows that you don't know what's going on. Two, if Chicago is a problem for you, I just mentioned both Weekly and Lennar both agreed to be part of the development team for the suburban rental. And again, two very sophisticated people, entities that understand uh, complex deals, I felt that it, it, it's very neat. I understand you're going to vote no. I know that going in. So I think your comments are taken well out of context. And, you know, if you look at everything Edgerock has done in this community, from bringing Riverview to building a stadium and raising the money for it and the other project, I think, you know, others would agree with me that you're wrong. Thank you. Mr. Maui. Do you have any questions or comments? Yes, thank you, Randy. Um, as as we've already heard, it's a really complex development. That's one of the first things that strikes me. There's a lot of moving parts. There's things like a Rubik's Cube, which is something I never mastered. Um, and, and with that in mind, I understand the need to have some flexibility. And I know there's been some concerns raised about, you know, some of the variations of use, but, but there's still limited in the proposed ordinance it's not like anything can go there i don't expect to have you know tenants assigned and names on the building there's there's a, there's a lot that I, I know birch and his team have to make happen before they can get everything to that point of finality and then i, I thought i had prepared and read through everything over the weekend but then when i saw the email today with some additional concerns i tried to go catch up really quick and, and went back through and looked again and as far as you know trying to pinpoint like exactly areas and things like that and again it was it was pretty quick for me after after uh, the work day today to try to catch up on that i i looked at it this way is we have to take all the documents together as a whole and if it was the written ordinance alone i probably would have a lot of concerns but the concept plan is incorporated the uh character exhibits are incorporated i know you know no architect could put together a decent set of of documents if he was relying only on written specs you have to have those drawings and so looked at it as a whole i felt like there was enough information here that i was comfortable with it so in the in the purview of this commission you know focusing on the land use planning and and uh holding this up to the comp plan I feel like it it fits and there's a great variety here. I think there's a lot that this uh, this proposed development has to offer for Westfield and uh, I appreciate all the hard work and effort that's gone into getting it to this point. And that's the end of my comments. Thank you. Mr. President, may I respond? Yes. Well, you know, you know, complex problems no different than a calculus equation. You break it into pieces, you know, and this one is pretty simple. You have three users taking districts three, four, one, and two. So districts three and four is weekly. Problem solved there. District two, the suburban rental. Problem solved there. If you look at the phasing plan, all these go quickly. On the GB, 
you know, which is only 39 acres, you know, the tennis facility will probably eat up 10 to 12 of it. And then if I'm lucky enough to get Aero Electronics, uh, McLaren, which, by the way, is probably the single highest price uh, production car or non-production car um, that we would have in America short of Ferraris and Lamborghinis. And um, so it's not that complex. You know, in District 5, it's a simple three to five acre farm. So um, I, I think just because of its size and its uh, creativeness, people think it's complex. It's not. We have a proven home builder, David Weekly. We have a, a, a simple suburban rental that is not that too hard to comprehend in a, a business district that, I mean, for that matter, Look around the lake at Grand Park. It's been zoned for five or six years. Nothing's built on it. Nobody's, you know, crying about that one. So it, it's a sense of fairness here and, and, and track record. You know, you know, I have people, you know, and I'm willing to move the pickleball to another location, if, you know, outside of Weston. You know, you know, this, you know, I've been the biggest investor in Grand Park other than the city, Andy Card and Ken Coke. So I think, you know, the the, the, the track records in, in something like that. <laughs> so uh, I think I appreciate your comment, um, Andre. And, and But I, I think this complex issue is not that hard if you break it into a couple of parts and the three users that's leading this thing. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Dalton, if I may follow up, Randy, this is Andre again. Uh, your your response is well taken, at least by me. I appreciate that, and I wish you would have been there helping me figure out calculus thirty some years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCarty. Questions, comments? Yeah, I'll just try to keep it brief. Try not to repeat anything that's already been said. Um, just my one concern that I always have when approving. Um, large sum of uh, housing or you know, huge housing developments, bringing more people in, 300 lots, 300 lots, whatever it may be. Um, that, that's just always my concern in that direction because of traffic, et cetera, you know. The age old problem that we always have being Westfield, that, that comes with the growth, unfortunately. Um, but in terms of just the sheer scope of the project, I'd like to echo uh, Maui's comments that have already been said. Of, just appreciating the work that staff, Birch, everyone's done on this project, and just try to keep it um, as in line and cohesive as possible. Um, and then you just look at everything that's going in to this project. So I know it's already been said, I think at the previous presentation, you have that huge water feature there. And I believe Birch, you uh, compared it to Disney Springs. Um, well, you look at Disney Springs, and there's a whole array of projects there. You know, there's retail, there's restaurants, there's uh, office buildings. So there's hotel, living quarters, et cetera, so on and so forth. I mean, there's a whole bunch that goes into it there. So, I mean, we're not going to um, see a project like this come around every so often. And it, it, that's unfortunate hearing that we lost the, the Ray Hall Letterman. So when I see a name like McLaren, I for sure want something like that here in Westfield. And then, of course, on the opposite end there with the uh, tennis, pickleball, complex. I think that would be fantastic for the area as well, and I think it works in. I also love the designs that we put into the church. I think that will be a great aspect of the project, and because that hasn't been mentioned yet, I think the park will be uh, great being adjacent there to the Mud on Trail. So um, I won't continue uh, too much, but I just wanted to, to say that much. Thank you. One response, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, I forgot to bring up the church, and I can assure you that Pastor Welch, Chad Hankerson, and all the people at Crossroads Church are anxious to be up here. So, you know, if you, again, look at the district, I have firm, shovel-ready projects ready to go. So it, it, it's uh, uh, assuming zoning's taken care of, you know, things will happen in 2021. And I apologize for not bringing up the church as one of my four users. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schmidt, questions or comments? Just one comment. I, I think the refinements that Birch and his team and, and staff and, and all the, that all the comments have led to have made this a much better project. 
over time. And I, I think that he's, re, he's achieved a good balance here of giving us sufficient detail and certainty, but yet maintaining some flexibility going forward. So uh, I, I think it justifies, at least we're at the point now, to make a land use decision from this body. I think we have the information we need. I'm very comfortable with it at this stage. Thanks. Thank you. Randy, uh, it's Keller. May I make some comments? Yes. <laughs> OK, I didn't early on. I kind of wanted to hear what other people said. Um, when I look at an ordinance, I look at what's in black and white. Um, and I know Mr. Maui said if that's all he looked at, he might be a little uncomfortable with that. Um, and, and I am, too. There are lots of great pictures, and I'm sure Birch intends to do a lot of this, but the pictures don't really tell us what we're going to get. And I, I try to put the marketing aside, Birch, and look at what's written in the ordinance itself. Um, that may be rather harsh, but it's it's what it is. And when we did Chatham, I don't think we expected to get Arbor Homes. They're a, a good home, but that was not certainly what the pictures looked like. So I think it's important for me to realize that I take a lot of the pictures and put them aside and just read the ordinance. Um, that's all I have to say, thanks. May I make a comment, Mr. Graham? Yes. I appreciate your, your comment and what, what I suggest uh, that would be helpful is that you rely on staff and we ask staff some questions here tonight about some of those issues within the PUD to make you feel more comfortable. And um, and I think if you read the ordinance in great detail, as the staff has worked with me on, you know, the words are as tight as what the, the pretty pictures are. But then again, you know, look at track record. You know, look at the PUD I wrote at, at the trails and look at the corresponding crew car wash and Starbucks I built. I would have to say, you would have to agree that that's a pretty high quality center that set the stage for that whole corridor because people nor uh, west of me copied and used my same architect in my architectural scheme. So I think, um, you know, if you allow staff to, to make comments tonight on, on the PUD, which I think staff should, so I'm going to ask them questions. Um, we can make you feel a little more comfortable, but thank you, Dr. Keller. Thank you. Ms. Spaldjeric, questions, comments? I just wanted to say I did submit comments to um, to Birch. Thank you for accepting those, Birch, and to Dane and to the APC today. I was going to um, bring them up tonight, but realizing that the vast majority of the questions and comments I had were more technical in nature, um, I didn't want to try and do that all here tonight so that's why i did that and appreciate anyone who who read it thank you did uh mr todd is there anything from staff at this point Yeah, I um, I may jump in on a couple of things here and sound like Birch had some questions. Maybe we'll maybe we'll lead with those. And so we're not double double backing on our time. Oh. All right. Let's okay. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. So, Kevin, I mean, you and I've met on this several times. Dane and I even more and went through four or five different red line versions with Cindy's comments, Mike John's comments. Let me ask you this. As far as level of detail in in the black and white part of the PUD, what would you think I rank as compared to other multi-use projects that have been approved in this town? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's hard. This is Kelleher here. I I I feel this is rather awkward to put staff in a position like this. I think the decision is to be made by the planning commission members. And I really don't think it's appropriate to, you know, staff has made their report and to put them on the spot and and ask them, I, I feel uncomfortable with. Well, I understand Dr. Zager. Keller, but I'm I, a I, I agree with Janet. I'm trying to get it zoned. So, I mean, you question the, the quality of the PUD, and I'm asking your staff, our staff, 
as to the quality of the PUD. And, and Birch, number one, I, I have read these. I, I've been around a long time. I probably read these in more detail than just about anybody except maybe Cindy. Uh, and I believe Mr. Zager made a comment as to my comment. Let me just Brian? take control here. I did. I think I think uh, I think Birch's request is asking the staff to almost grade his submission, which is not appropriate. I think the staff can discuss how easily they would be able to administer it and how complete it is, but not value it compared to other submissions. I don't I don't think that's a fair question, Birch. So, All right, so Zager. Go ahead, Kevin. Ask yeah, so the let me Zager one. Yeah, let me respond to, to the way Brian phrased it. So I I think the ordinance that we have in front of us all together, black and white text, in addition to the concept plan, the character exhibits and all of it as one whole document um, is something that we can administer. And it's something it's it's, you know, comparable to other mixed use PUDs that we have in our jurisdiction from a composition standpoint. All right. So let, let me chime in here. Um, I asked to hear the comments of, of staff because there's been so much information laid out here in both directions tonight. Okay, so Mr. Dalton, while you may have questions, we're not going to have a cross-examination here. We, know we normally don't. Uh, we're not going to tonight. So I, ref I, I defer back to Mr. Todd that you have any anything to add to uh, the additional information that's been laid out here this evening? Anything you'd like to see before I call the vote? Randy, was that for Birch or for me? I'm sorry, I missed what you. That's for you. Oh. <laughs> so I, I defer back to me. Ask you, do you have any comments? Uh, because I don't want the other to get out of hand. So, yeah. So, so just a, just a couple quick follow up items. I mean, there were some comments or questions made regarding, um, you know, certain things being being quote unquote guaranteed. I, I just just kind of a quick zoning um, discussion. That that's not really the purpose of of a zoning document. Uh, purpose of a zoning document is to regulate uses and how they are built or constructed and the the site design and layout and and those sorts of things not um quote unquote guaranteeing anything <laughs> um i think from a from a planning overall planning perspective and philosophy i think in a lot of ways providing um, some flexibility in uses is is generally looked on as a, as a good thing as long as the collective uses are consistent with our comprehensive plan. Um, so I get I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I think it, I think it's also appropriate to consider, you know, having multiple places in our community for various uses. I don't think we necessarily want to isolate um, specific properties or lands for any specific use i i just i don't think that's generally good zoning practice so just just a couple just general broad not not necessarily in relation to this project but i've heard it over um over time on other projects and i think this is a good time to interject so thank you mr todd i was hoping you could cover some of that um you know, I, I understand that not everyone fully understands the concept of what we're doing here. We do have some freshman uh, commissioners this year. Um, some of the other comments, um, I, I think are very borderline uh, inappropriate and unethical to some degree in the way things have been carried out by some of us here. Um, but that's what I have to say about that. And, and I would say heed the words of Mr. Todd and uh, we, we can move into next year with uh, some future projects. So I've given everyone a chance to speak. I've had a chance to speak. And uh, having heard the discussion on this, 
I would be inclined to make a motion to send 2009-BUD-11 Woods Robinson Brig UD to the City Council with a positive recommendation. Okay, we'll second that. Have a motion made by Randall Graham, seconded by Mr. Horke, to send 2009-PUD-11 Woods Robinson Briggs PUD to the City Council with a positive recommendation. Will the staff please call the roll? Mr. Horke? Yes. Mr. John? No. Dr. Kelleher? No. Howie? Yes. Mr. McCarty? Yes. Yes. Ms. Bulgeric? Oh, I'm, I can hear you. Um, that's, no, I'm sorry. It's unfortunately a no vote. Ms. Bergman? No. Mr. Graham? Yes. Okay, motion carries 5-4. Thank you. Mr. Dalton, you had requested some final remarks after we voted this evening. Uh, yes. Um, you know, the vote was anticipated to come down the way it was, and I just want to be clear that uh, I, I will not be taking this to council, nor will allow it to go on the agenda until uh, uh, as I, as petitioner, uh, uh, say it can go on the agenda. And uh, my attorney will be uh, contacting Poindexter in the morning uh, to let them know that we're not going to have a repeat of the last uh, situation we had with Shamrock. So, but that, thank you to the people that voted for it. And uh, thank you to the other ones for serving. And um, that's all I have, Mr. Graham. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dalton. Moving on to reports and comments. Anything from commission members? City Council liaison? No comments. Board of Zoning Appeals. BDA met last, about two weeks ago, had one straightforward pool location variance in uh, Maple. Uh, that uh, Maple Ridge neighborhood, and that variance was granted, and that is it. Thank you, Mr. Schmitz. Uh, anything from staff this final APC meeting of 2020? Yeah, so just a few a few things here. Um, as mentioned earlier in the meeting, your next plan commission meeting will be on Tuesday, January 19th. Um, we do not have a, a early January um, meeting scheduled. So um, just wanted to make make sure, and, and it's a Tuesday, I think, because of uh, one of the Monday holidays. So just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. We'll send out reminders as we get closer to that date. Um, we are, I also wanted to announce, we are looking at doing a, a, plan, a plan commission training session, or actually it may end up being um, three or four different sessions. We're, we're looking at probably breaking down into maybe 90 minute sessions for, for you guys. Um, looking at starting those at the end of January. Um, we'll, we'll likely be looking at um, evening times and I'll, we'll again be kind of communicating, coordinating times that work for everybody. Um, likely will be Tuesdays, Thursdays, or you know whichever of those days work the best for folks. Um, We'll be covering topics like planning and zoning, um, just kind of 101 stuff, PUDs, um, those kinds of things. So watch for more details. Um, there may be a questionnaire or two about your availability. So um, responses would be would be um, appreciated. But otherwise, um, that's it from us. Hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday. We'll see you in 21. Thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you and all the commissioners and everyone who's staff. And with that, uh, Randall Graham will make a motion to adjourn. Kelleher will second. Okay.
have a motion made by Randall Graham, seconded by Dr. Kelleher, to adjourn the meeting. Will staff please call the roll? Mr. Johns? Yes. Dr. Kelleher? Yes. Happy holidays, everybody. Mr. Maui? Yes. Merry Christmas, everyone. Mr. McCarty? Yes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Mr. Schmitz? Yes. Ms. Bulgeric? Yes, season greetings. Ms. Berkman? Yes. Mr. Graham? Yes. Mr. Horke? Yes. We are adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.